I'm Johnny Rowland, and welcome to The Shooting Show. Our program is devoted to showing the sporting and recreational uses of firearms. I think you're really going to enjoy our program today. We have a lot of very talented and entertaining guests who are going to appear on the show. We also have some country music that I think you're really going to enjoy. So, without further ado, we put my goggles on here, safety glasses, let the shooting show begin. Wasn't that fun? Friends, we want to talk about a lot of different types of guns today. The revolver I have in my hand is a Smith & Wesson Model 625 in 45 ACP caliber. So this shoots the same cartridge as the government model semi-automatic pistol that the military has used for so long. But I happen to like revolvers a lot. For one, it doesn't throw your empty brass all around the field. But this is a very fine and accurate revolver. It's good for a, uh, to be used by a detective such as myself or for the homeowner. It loads in half or full moon clips. And it, they all load at one time and they eject at the same time. Later on in the show, Jerry Mitchellick is going to be shooting one of these uh, and he can really show what can be done. But let's see the gun in action. I'd rather like that myself. Now one thing that I want to stress, whenever we're shooting, we always use safety glasses, impact resistant glasses, because your eyesight is very, very difficult to repair if it gets damaged. In a lot of cases, you can't repair it. Another thing, I have uh, earplugs in made of a soft gel. They're very effective, and you want to conserve your hearing because your hearing is kind of like your, your sight. If you lose it, it's very, very difficult, if possible at all, to get back. The next gun we're going to demonstrate, this is a new Smith & Wesson Model 610 revolver. Now it shoots another uh, semi-automatic pistol cartridge, the 10 millimeter. It will also shoot the 40 Smith & Wesson because, uh, which is a shorter version of the 10, essentially, uh, because it head spaces or uses full moon or half moon clips just like the 45 uh, ACP revolver that we shot in another segment. So this is one of my very favorite handguns to use and it's extremely accurate. So let's shoot it one time, see what it looks like. And now friends, we're going to have the pleasure of watching one of the great shooters of all time, Rob Latham, courtesy of Dillon Precision. This is part of the Shooter Ready tape and let's watch Rob for a moment. I'm going to share with you some techniques that have helped me over the years. Some may work, some may not, but they should make you a better and safer shooter. The action shooting sport has grown rapidly over the past 10 or 12 years. This growth was led by California and Arizona, where men like Jeff Cooper, Jack Weaver, Ray Chapman, Thel Reed Jr., Eldon Carl and Terry Allison envisioned pistol competition that featured action scenarios. Targets instead of round bullseyes would be armed adversaries, often more than one. Time required to hit the target was as important as accuracy. They called this new type of competition practical or combat pistol shooting. The term combat has since been dropped for the more innocuous titles of action or IPSC shooting. IPSC stands for International Practical Shooting Confederation. Today, IPSC matches are held all over the world, involving shooters who believe in the sport and the safety and professionalism surrounding it. That was an El Presidente. 12 shots on three targets, with the draw and a reload under five seconds. We appreciate so much Dillon Precision Products working with us and loaning us their uh, tape, Shooter Ready. And that tape can be obtained from Dillon Precision Products Incorporated in Scottsdale, Arizona. The address and phone number appear on your screen. Yeah. Well, here we are this afternoon with my good friend, Mr. Tom Cunningham from over in Dallas, Texas. And Tom and I are going to be talking about safety. 
because this is one of the most important things that people really should worry about. A lot of people now are buying handguns and long guns for that matter because they're concerned about the safety of, their, of themselves and their family. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to be safe with firearms. Now this is a 357 Magnum revolver and you'll notice the cylinder is out and empty. Now if someone wants to store a gun like this in their home, all they have to do, and if they're concerned about a child getting hold of it and possibly playing with it, one method of safeguarding this gun is to take a regular padlock here, putting it through the top strap of the gun, and you'll notice the cylinder cannot close. And to ready the gun for firing, all you have to do is unlock the padlock and take it off, and then the gun can be used normally. You can keep uh, your ammunition ready to load your gun into your revolver in a speed loader, so all you have to do when you want to use the revolver or load it is insert the bullets into the cylinder and push, and the gun's loaded and ready for use. Johnny, let me ask you a question, since this is a new device to me. Uh, and you were mentioning a minute ago about safety, and uh, especially children, where children are involved. And mm -hmm. I can easily see that that padlock uh, is just foolproof, unless a child could somehow get it open, and that's highly unlikely. Uh -huh. But as far as uh, keeping your uh, bullets uh, away from a child, is this as safe as anything? Or Well, uh, what you need to do is keep... Uh, your ammunition, you can store it separately from uh, the firearm itself and preferably in a, in a locked case or somewhere where a child is not uh, likely or, or the child can't get to it. Uh, this is an HKF speed loader and of course this is a Safari Land we featured a moment ago. They operate differently but one is just as good as the other. It just depends on which one you like or what you get used to. So they're really not safety devices, they're convenient no, devices. No, these are convenience devices okay. for instant loading, similar to a magazine in an auto-loading handgun. Now, one other place we can put the lock, of course, and we always check to see, be sure it's unloaded. We could put the lock in behind the trigger. And you'll notice what happens here. The, it can't be pulled far enough to cycle. The gun cannot possibly function. So that's another way, and of course there are several companies that make specific trigger locks that work with keys or with, with finger pressure. But if you don't have uh, one available to you, a simple padlock will work awfully well. Now another type of handgun we have here is a semi-automatic handgun, and we're going to discuss the lock situation on it in just a moment. The uh, one advantage you have to a semi-automatic handgun, which may or may not be an advantage, is you can store the magazine loaded but separate away from the handgun. And of course we're going to check and be sure it's empty, which it is. But, and when you need to use the gun or make it ready uh, to fire, all you have to do is insert the magazine into the base of the frame. And certainly you can store it safely by keeping the magazine in a separate location away from the handgun. But the same principle applies to this is a double action semi-automatic handgun. You can put the lock, lock on the revolver behind the trigger or you can run, for instance. Or run the cable through either one. Right. You can run the cable. Out of working order. Absolutely. You can run the cable up through the grip frame. Uh, and out through the open ejection port. In fact, you can even close it on that and, of course, lock the cable lock and the gun is absolutely safe. It cannot be fired. Now, Tom, while we're talking about safety, I think it's very important to give the folks who are watching uh, the most important rule that I know of about gun handling, and that is we never, ever point a loaded or unloaded gun at anything or anyone, nothing that cannot, uh, that we can't do without. Never point a gun at anything which cannot be destroyed. And that means not only human beings, but pets. That's right. That's or right. valuable vases or anything, anything that's, at all that, you that you cannot afford to lose. 
because accidental discharges do happen. Accidents do happen. So the first rule of thumb and mind and whatever else you want to talk about is we never point a gun loaded or unloaded because sometimes it's going to happen. That's, that's true. I've known people who were, were police officers and uh, uh, who were very familiar with handguns, but on a semi-automatic handgun, they forgot about the round in the chamber. They took the magazine out of the gun and forgot about the one that might have been in the chamber. And bang, pull the trigger and bang. It's funny you say that. I've got a police officer friend over in Dallas who exactly what you said happened. And he's still a power lifter, big robust guy, but he has a slight limp because of his little toe that he took about half of it off doing exactly what you said. That's exactly his story. That is, is so true. Mm. We never point at parts of our body, and we have a, uh, another rule that goes along with this. We never put our finger on the trigger until we're ready to shoot. There's no point. You don't need to walk around with your finger inside the trigger guard. You only put your finger on the trigger when you're ready to shoot. So, so you don't rely on that the safety may be no, on or, no. or whether it's single or double no. action, whether the hammer's back or something. Absolutely just, not. Just don't do it. Just don't do it, and you won't have an accident. Don't put your finger on the trigger. Gun won't go off. It's that simple. <laughs> That's if it. you're holding it, it won't go off if you don't put your finger on the trigger. Now, uh, certainly we try and keep from dropping guns uh, uh, right. or having, but again, accidents do happen. That's why there are safeties to prevent us uh, in a movement of some kind or an accident to keep the gun from going off. But we don't trust safeties. We will not, we're gonna, we're gonna trust our, our uh, good practices and good training. That's what we can trust. We have to be responsible for our own actions. And you know what, today in our lawsuit riddled society, uh, people do, don't want to be responsible. They want to blame somebody else. They will, uh, uh, I, was, I had the safety on my gun and uh, uh, I had my safety on, and somehow it, it went off. Well, probably they pushed the safety off. But you, and my brother just happened to be standing out there. Just like, <laughs> or whoever, or whoever. Whoever, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're exactly right. And if it had it not been pointed That's in that right. direction, it wouldn't have mattered if the safety was on. That's if, right. If the, our first rule had been observed. That's true. That's so true. We had featured the Smith & Wesson uh, 648 revolver a little earlier, or, or on another segment, in fact. But this is in 22 Magnum, and it's an awfully good gun to train uh, new shooters with. It's good for younger shooters, such as my, my daughter here, who's 13, and it's good for women or people who can't deal with recoil. It's extremely accurate and a lot of fun to shoot. So we're going to show you Tara, who's had uh, instruction from us for a long time now on how to uh, properly handle a handgun. Let's watch her shoot these balloons. Yeah. Go to another one. Yeah. Get that one. Yeah. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Here we have Tom Cunningham again, our good friend from Dallas. And Tom and I have worked together on many projects over the years. And sure have. <laughs> we have, and certainly having a great time shooting today. Tom's going to be featured during one of our music parts of the program. He is, uh, in past years, has been a world record holder in powerlifting and has done all kinds of things, and he's going to do some very entertaining things during our music portion of the show. But right now he's going to shoot his personal favorite handgun, and this is a Ruger 44 Magnum Red Hawk. It's stainless steel and a very strong and very accurate gun. So, Tom, let's load this, let's load this thing up and give the folks at home there an idea of just what it will do. We got our speed loader here about halfway ready. Good. Good. Now friends, let's pause from shooting for just a moment and we're going to play a little country music for you. Right now we're going to feature a young man from Dallas, Texas named Doug Perdue. And Doug's going to sing a song for us that I believe you wrote about your dad, huh Doug? Sure did. The song's called FM in Heaven. Well, I tell you, I like the sound of that, and I know we're going to enjoy it. All right. I grew up in a small town near Dallas, son of a special kind of man. He stood up by 
as tall as a mountain Raised me with calloused, beloved hands He worked hard and taught me about Jesus The dad said man can't do it on his own But he's gone now and God how I miss him So daddy I'm singing you this song I hope they have a film in heaven Daddy always loved the country song I hope they have a film in heaven Cause then he'll know my love for him lives on As I grew up we sang in church together Daddy sang one way of love of bass it always made him so proud to see us all together. And Daddy's favorite song was Amazing Grace. I hope they have a film in heaven. My Daddy always loved the country song. I hope they have a film in heaven. Cause then he'll know my love for him lives on. It's been years now and God, I still miss him. A lot of folks I know feel the same. One of these days I'm going to be with him. But for now I'm just trying to live up to his good name. I hope they have a film in heaven. Now daddy always loved the country song. I hope they have a film in heaven. Then he'll know my love for him lives on Yeah, then he'll know my love for him lives on On and on Thank you. Hi, I'm Walter Lidecker, famous gun writer. You can see I got my famous gun writer's outfit on here, my woolly bully sweater, my Chuck Taylor slacks, and my... Uh, Banana, Banana Republic Bush Vest. This is called the Gunman's, or actually it's uh, Mossad Ayub has said that it's the uh, garment of choice for yuppies, cameramen, and prof and, or professional cameramen and gunmen. Anyhow, we're out here at the exclusive uh, uh, facility, Eastern Long Island's great uh, Pine Barrens IRTC range. We're going to do a little test of a, of a very interesting gun this afternoon. It's called a hybrid. I'm um, doing it for combat handguns. Harry Kane has asked me to do a little roundup on uh, on what's new in 45 ACP. And believe me, this is new in 45 ACP. This is uh, invented by a fellow out in Car Carson City, Nevada, called Will Schumann. He calls it the hybrid compensator. And um, th most compensators, you know, hang off the end of a gun inch and a half, two inches maybe. Uh, got a lot of expansion uh, chambers and ports and such in them. This is an internal compensator. Now, we're going to show you a close-up of this, but uh, we're also going to do some shooting. And we're going to do some shooting alongside of a regular officer's model Colt 45 ACP, um, non-compensated. And then we're going to do the same load through the hybrid compensator that Will Schumann sent me for a little test of an evaluation here. So we'll get to this right now. We're going to start shooting. Uh, this is pull out the standard officer's model. We're going to run through it first with some 45 ACP, naturally, laser, 230 FMJ, we call it, they call it TMJ, totally metal jacketed. And we're going to get some uh, close-up shots here of what this, how this gun recoils, and we'll do the same rounds through the officer's model. We'll do some uh, hotter stuff too, some uh, jacketed hollow points from uh, from Black Hill Shooters Supply, and from Winchester Silver Tips, and some of that a real killer in conventional ammo, the Remington 185, 185 grain plus P. And that sucker hurts when I shoot it out of my regular non-compensated, uh, without an extended uh, grip safety uh, government model. That actually stings me a little bit. So we'll see what it looks like and how easily the, or how well the hybrid compensator uh, we'll tame that really hot, which uh, chronos around 100, 1130 feet per second out of my five-inch government model. I have no idea what it, comp uh, what it, what it chronos out over the packed uh, screen, sky screens of my packed chrono mode um, with, with the officer's model, 
but uh, we'll do that later, and you'll have to read the article in uh, Combat Handguns to see, uh, to see what the figures are. So let's get shooting for the shooting show. Okay, we're going to start off here, as I said, with the uh, CCI Blazer, 230 uh, grain PMJ, and uh, shooting show viewers, you should just watch the muzzle. Right, I'm not rigging this, I'm using my ordinary Chapman stance, which is a modified Weaver, and of course, anything that's actually not shot by Jack Weaver is modified. But here we go, we'll just take a couple shots here. Now this is the officer's model with the hybrid compensator. We'll give you a real close-up look at this in a couple minutes, but right now I want you to watch it with the same 230 grain TMJ CCI blazer going through it. Watch that muzzle. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. But this this guy really works. This is what it looks like. It's a it's a rib that's attached to the top of the barrel uh, with funneled ports. They might even be called Laval nozzles. I'm not I'm not exactly sure of that. And uh, this fellow Schumann, Will Schumann, out in Carson City, Nevada, that came up with this, uh, he calls it a hybrid, not because it has anything to do with flowers or corn, but because he's married two technologies, that of aerospace, which is what he does in real life, and firearms. And uh, we have this, I guess you can see this pretty, pretty good here. Uh, that's what it is. That's, I can say that's all it is, but uh, it works. As simple as it is, it works very nicely. Uh, so much so that Caspian Arms up in Hartwick, Vermont, has licensed the technology from Will Schumann, and they're going to be putting out uh, a series of 1911-style guns with this as an par integral part of the barrel. You see how they made a milling cut in the slide here to accommodate that. Uh, I like it. This is the second one of these I've had for test and evaluation. They sent down a month or so ago a uh, 3914 Ladysmith, in which they done a uh, done a job on it with the uh, with the hybrid, and I was carrying around for another article I was working on a 3913 NL that Bill Lockridge had tricked up for me out at the uh, cylinder and flight. Had not tricked up. He'd done a reliability package on, and uh, we fired that. That was very impressive. And there's going to be an article on that in uh, SWAT magazine upcoming uh, very shortly, and as well as the current issue uh, when you see this, the current issue of uh, guns and women. We want to thank our good friend Waldo for contributing to our program. He's certainly a good friend and has been a tremendous help to us. We also want to thank the good people at Pine Bear and Sportsman's Range for letting us use their facility. Friends, the first thing I want to say is I don't carry a purse, but my wife does, and she loaned me hers for just a minute. I want to show you something that a lot of women will be interested in. Now, this is a regular and pretty normal-looking women's handbag. Uh, this is a pretty nice one. Uh, uh, it's made out of very soft, uh, supple leather, but if, if she, my wife, or uh, your wife, or you yourself as a woman, say you're going out to your car and you're bothered with someone, simple thing. This is just a regular old handbag until we do this, and aha, my wife's Model 19. <laughs> so this is a much better surprise. Uh, I think this is a surprise you'd want to give an attacker. So uh, uh, this is a great idea for, for women. We highly recommend this concept for all the ladies. Now, I want to show everyone uh, several revolvers here. One of the larger revolvers, this is a Ruger Blackhawk in 45 Colt chambering, but it is also a single action revolver. A lot of people don't know the difference in a single action revolver and a double action revolver. Single action uh, means you, you have to cock the hammer for each shot. Nothing happens when you pull the trigger by itself. The gun is cocked, the hammer is cocked with the thumb and fired. It only has one way of firing. Cock the hammer and pull the trigger, all right? A double action revolver, such as we have here, this Smith & Wesson Model 29, and we'll be sure it's unloaded. We always uh, be sure our guns are unloaded when we handle them. It also has the single action mechanism, like this revolver, 
but it can also be fired by just pulling the trigger, called trigger cocking. So that's where the term double action comes from. This is a double action revolver. This is a single action revolver. They both have their uh, good points. Both of them are good and accurate to shoot and a lot of fun. This is, as I said a moment ago, one of the larger single action revolvers. And here's one of the smallest. This is a North American Arms 22 Magnum mini revolver. Another company, Freedom Arms, makes a very fine little revolver. This one happens to be a North American Arms. This one is in 22 Magnum chambering. So I have my uh, eye protectors and I also have my, my ear protectors in. So let's see if this little, let's watch this little thing fire. Now friends, when you load a single action revolver, it doesn't work the same as a double action revolver with a swung out cylinder. You open the loading gate right here and you load the shells one at a time. And of course this is in 45 Colt chambering, which is a grand old cartridge. It's been around since about 1873. Now the Ruger with the sliding transfer bar is safe to carry with six rounds. A, uh, the old Colts and the old model Ruger should only be carried with five rounds and the hammer over an empty hole in the cylinder. It should never be carried with six except the new models and be very careful. Some of the Colt copies are made the same way. They should only be carried with five rounds chamber. Well, let's watch this old gun in action. Great fun. And now, friends, let's join the great Bob Munden, the fast draw expert. In fact, the world champion fast draw expert. And remember, and he's going to say it during his show, in fast draw, you don't use real bullets. You only practice and use blanks for safety's sake. So let's go with Bob here. Name of the game, fast. <laughs> fast as you can move. It's a lot of fun. Don't ever try fast draw like this with live ammunition, OK? Just a word of advice there. But how fast is the draw? Why is it you can't see it like you can in the Western movies? We'd like to explain that for you by timing it on the clock, just the draw itself. The way we'll do this, Bob will put his gun hand on the button that actually works the timer. When he presses a button down, it will set it. When he releases that button to go for the gun, the clock will start. And when he fires it, the sound is what stops the clock. This will tell us just how fast he's actually moving his two hands to draw and fire this 45 single action. Let's see why Bob has won all his championships and is recognized by the Guinness Book of World Records as the fastest man with a gun who ever lived. Now, as a comparison, before I make this particular draw, keep in mind that Dylan of Gunsmoke, for years we've watched him draw and fire his gun. When he did, he averaged between eight to eight and a half tenths of one second to do so. That's right here at the 80, where my finger is now on the timer at the 80. The clock is now standing at 55, a little over. We'll call it a 55. That is five and a half tenths of one second. Jerry Lewis, Sammy Davis Jr., the very best among movie stars of all time, in their prime and best years were quite consistent between four to four and a half tenths of a second, or at the 40, where my hand is now at the 4-0. It takes you 15 hundredths of one second. That's between zero and the 10 and the 20 here simply to blink your eye. That's as fast as you can go, that is if you're human. Look at that, 500 people blinking their eyes. Feel the breeze? Well, we're gonna show you why you cannot see this. It is truly happening much faster than we humans really can see. You will never see this kind of a draw in a Western movie either. It is simply too fast. Unbelievable on film and for good reason. But if you were to ask me how fast I can draw this gun, or many people do, I find telling them with words to be quite difficult, if not impossible. For we are truly dealing within a time element here that you're simply not familiar with. Prior to this show, in your mind, one second was fast. Let me try to show you just how slow one second really is. Now keep in mind that one second is one time all the way around the face of that timer right there. 1,001. There it is, 1,001. Well, let's see where the clock stops this time, and then we'll do something very special. But let's get this out of the way first. It 
elapsed time on the clock just for the draw itself is a four one hundredths of one second and you wondered why you couldn't see it well i thought it would be of interest to, you to see just how fast the old single action really is well let's say a couple of shots anyway so what we've done here is set up two targets and what i'll do here is load this gun with two shots now what i'll do is draw the gun once wasn't that cute <laughs> I'll cock it, which I must do. Come over, fire, hit the first balloon, or at least try. Cock it again. Come over, fire, hit the second balloon, and do that as quickly as possible. I must cock and fire the gun twice, with no exception. One, two. I cannot simply pull the trigger. The gun cannot be fired this way. Now, because of the Western movie, I just presume that we're going to draw the gun once, bring it out, and fan it twice, like so. Bang, bang. You have been watching too many Western movies. I might suggest that you listen quite closely. Now, to keep this on the up and up, and we certainly want to do that, if I may, I'd like to have a couple of fellows here right in front here, if they will. A fellow here with the glasses, leaning over, the kind of who's right in the pink shirt. Maybe you can join them. Come on over here. No hat on. Come over here. Boy, you ain't got much on, let alone hat. I ain't making fun of you. It's just skin. That's all right. It's good skin. That's all right. How you doing? Bob Munder, stand right over here. Now, they're, no, they're not going to be my targets. Thank you. No, they're going to be your eyes. They're going to verify that there are only two shots in this gun before we get started. When I'm through shooting, they will verify that I've done my job right or wrong. And if I mess this up, and I've been known to do so, we'll just load up and try it again. Gentlemen, there are two shots in this gun, right? Absolutely. Now, for your information, one shot will not and cannot get both targets. I will have to shoot two shots, one for each target. But I must confess, if I do this right, I absolutely guarantee most of you will walk out of here saying, oh, there's a trick. On the other hand, if I mess it up, those same folks will walk out of here saying, "Ah, he ain't much. Please check yeah. the gun and ammunition. Make sure both rounds have been fired. Call them, please. They have been fired. They're hot, hot fire. and smoking, and the gun is empty. If you don't believe that, you talk to those two guys after the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks two shots with an old-fashioned single-action revolver. You know, friends, the tapes we're using are just small excerpts of the uh, whole tapes. Uh, the Latham tape from Dylan and the others we're using are just small excerpts. This tape, which I know you'll enjoy on the great Bob Munden, and I've seen him live and in person, and uh, great is an understatement. It's a fantastic thing he does. He has a 75-minute tape. For $43, you can write to Bob Munden, 1621 Sampson, Butte, Montana, 59701. Believe me, you will not be disappointed. You know, Tom, we're having such a great time today out here in the field it's shooting. It's a beautiful day out on your farm. The scenery is beautiful. And it's probably around 50 degrees, no wind. It's just a beautiful fall, early winter day. We're just having a wonderful time out here. Yes, we are. Yes, Maxim we are. some shooting. Now, friends, darn it, if you folks want to come back and visit us here on the farm, please, please support our television show. We need sponsors to buy ads with us. Only $250 per 30-second spot. Heck, we'll do it 125 for 15 seconds. Say we'll, that again. Is two, that possible? Two hundred. Yes, it is. What is that? How 200. Much? We have the lowest budget t national television show in the history of the world. It's $250 for a 30-second commercial mm. with, our, with our program. And, of course, we feature so many different types of things. Uh, on this show, we featured a lot of things we've high-spotted because we want to show some of the things we're going to do. On a weekly program, we'll be able to get uh, more in-depth on a lot of things, like reloading. Reloading is a major part of most shooting enthusiasts uh, of part of their routine. But we need your support. Please, folks, come here, darling. Come here, please. Come here, please. Come here. See this little girl right here? We need your support. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we need your support. She, she may need braces sometimes. <laughs> And folks, you can write or call us at the shooting show, 554 Kings Highway, Shreveport, Louisiana. The zip code is 71104. You can call us at area 318-222-8515. We believe in what we're doing, and we hope you do too. We hope you like our concept, so please advertise with us if you can. Now, friends, our time is so limited on our program today. We have so much to cover in high spot. But I do want to showcase a few of the fine artists that we're going to be featuring on our weekly program as soon as it begins. Here's Miss Gail Beach from Plainview, Texas. It's given in. Would you catch me, baby, if I fall for you? Would you keep your arms wide open just in case I do?
And here's part of a performance by Mr. Les Humphrey from Dublin, Louisiana. And he's got a good head on his shoulders. Every time he holds you with his arms so tight, you can't get any closer. He's got a good head on his shoulders. And now, folks, here's Mr. Tom Cunningham, a good friend from Dallas, doing part of his show. That's incredible. Now, friends, I hope you're enjoying our program. Our intent is to be entertaining as well as informative. Next, we're going to visit with Mr. Jerry Ahern from down in Georgia. Jerry is a well-known gun writer, and we're going to show part of one of his video zines. I'm Jerry Ahern. Guns and the gear that goes with them have changed dramatically over the last hundred years, Yet some guns from the last century are so enduring, they will be used in the next century. Gunsmith Gene Bristow is zeroing this Model 94 3030 rifle at 100 yards from the bench of his outdoor range in northeast Georgia. This Winchester Model 94 and other lever actions like it are often considered cowboy guns, but the Model 94 is and has been and will be one of America's most popular deer rifles. A good hunter always puts in range time before taking to the game fields. The traditional lever action loads through the receiver loading gate one round at a time. Current U.S. repeating arms Winchester 94s not only feature angle eject when a scope may be mounted, but are safer to unload than earlier models because the lever must be flush against the stock for the rifle to be fired. This means that mass unloading can be accomplished with minimized risk of accidental discharge. Lever actions were always popular because of their fast handling. There's nothing more satisfying to a concerned hunter than knowing that when he does his part in the game fields, his rifle and ammunition combination will do their part as well. The Model 94s of today continue Winchester's tradition of practical, high-quality lever actions begun more than a century ago. Jerry Ahern's Guns and Gear, A Century of Guns in America. Only $49.95 in highest quality video. From the Winchester Model 94 3030 to the Partisan Avenger 45 ACP. From the Desert Eagle 44 Magnum to the Lady Smith Revolvers to the HK91 308 to the Teutonic Service Master 45. All the guns you want to know about in highest quality video. Only $49.95 from Videozine Enterprises Incorporated. P.O. Box 6892 Athens, Georgia. 30604. Visa and MasterCard accepted. Only forty nine ninety five. Act now. And here we have our good friend Tab Can interviewing probably the world's fastest revolver shooter, Jerry Michelik from Team Smith and Wesson. We're very lucky to have Jerry here with us. He's with uh, Smith and Wesson. He's from South Louisiana. Probably one of the fastest revolver, double action revolver shooters to shoot in a competition. Today, I think everybody would be a little bit interested, I am, to know how long you've been shooting, Jerry, and how you got into uh, guns, and how long you've been doing it. Well, uh, as far as shooting goes, I've been shooting something or, or the other BB guns, you know, 22 rifles, uh, pistols, and what have you, ever since I was old enough to uh, carry one safely. Uh, so it's been an ongoing uh, battle, <laughs> you could say, uh, trying to get better and learn the different techniques involved with, with the different firearms. How long do you think you've been shooting at this point? Is... Well, the first match I've ever shot was in 77, so 
and then it went on for about six, seven years, just, you know, uh, maybe uh, once or twice a, a year we'd shoot a little match or something, and then it kept getting more intense, and we started making bigger competitions and what have you. How much uh, practice do you do uh, in a year's time when you're really shooting a lot of matches? Uh, in a year's time, well, like last year was one of my better years. I was still working full time. Uh, I guess I fired maybe 30,000, 35,000 rounds in a, in a year's time, uh, which is not really a great number, but for a part time shooter, it, you know, it's, it's about all I could do. This is your first year with Smith and Wesson? Yes, sir, since June, yes. And I know that's something that you really enjoy and been looking to do for a long time to be able to shoot on a full time basis and go out and sponsor somebody, have somebody sponsor you. Yeah, well, Smith & Wesson is the uh, largest manufacturer of handguns in the, in the world, and they wanted to field a, uh, a competitive shooting team to match their number one image as, a, as the uh, largest handgun manufacturer. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the equipment you use and uh, people be interested in it, because I know a lot of what you shoot is uh, pretty close to a stock revolver that anybody can go in and purchase in a sporting goods store. Mm -hmm. Well, this, uh, this model 625 is a... Uh, this gun is basically stocked down even to the grips. Uh, it's a model 625-2, shoots the uh, 45 ACP cartridge, 5 inch, with the Ed McGiven gold bead, and that's about the only difference on this and when you buy out of the box. Uh, this is still a factory option if you're interested in the gold bead front sight. That gives you a little bit more higher visibility? Yes, sir, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, here my old model 27, which is my main uh, competition gun. I've been using this particular revolver since 1981 and uh, it maybe has maybe 150,000 rounds through it. Have you ever had to have anything done to it after you... Uh, no, not this time? one. This one's been re uh, very good to me. I had bought it second hand and it's still running good, uh, running great. Well, that's a tremendous amount of rounds. Most people would never even shoot that. And, uh, uh, well, they're just not going to shoot that many rounds. Well, the large frame Smith & Wessons are, are noted for their strength and this one pretty much bears it out. Uh, is there anything uh, that that revolver has an advantage over over this uh, Model 27? Uh, the uh, speed loading capabilities, the full moon clips. Why don't you show us a little bit uh, okay. about how that works? Well, I have here some dummy ammo uh, to practice speed loading with. See, the 25, you can dump it like so, and when you speed load it, loads all six rounds at one right. time and, and they reject it at they one eject time. They one time, you see. So it, when you're doing a competition where you need a fast reload, it's, this particular revolver is very hard to beat. So you basically shoot that in a competition that may have a 12-round a sequence, whereas right, you shoot uh, your Model 27 right. in a six-round drill. Like second-chance bowling pin competitions where you shoot the eight-pin events and what have you. It's a fine revolver for that. All right, sir, tell us what you're going to do. We have Jerry Michalik from South Louisiana. Uh, Mich Michalik, let me correct that. Michalik, I asked earlier. And, uh, Jerry, what you, what you going to do for us? What I'm going to try to do here is uh, draw and shoot six rounds out of a standard Smith & Wesson revolver in under a second. Now the uh, first shot is going to actually start the timer. So what we're timing here is five shots out of the revolver on one, one stationary target. We're going to go ahead and give it a run and see what it looks like. Okay. Shooter ready. Stand by. That was 118. Well, let's figure here. Well, sir, as an opener, the camera crew is impressed, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was the first shot? Uh, 118 was the first shot. Last right. shot was 201. So about. That was uh, eight. 18 off? 8300? 8300, yes, okay. Cool. First to the last shot? Yes, we do want to get that on tape. From the first to the last shot was 8300. <laughs> <laughs> Sick here. And it's 38 special ammo. What I'm gonna try to do is shoot this thing at the same rate of fire as that uh, model 27 I was shooting a while ago, that 838. I'm gonna have Kay do the timing for me again. This is just on one plate. Stick around and see what happens. Stand 
bar. What I've got here is the model uh, 625 revolver. Let's shoot the 45 ACP button. What I'm going to try to do is to draw and shoot six rounds and reload and shoot six more in, in under six seconds. I'm trying to hit that plate well, with at least every shot I hope. Stand by. Hello. Folks, that's a knockdown of the Ace 45 <laughs> ACQ. <laughs> yes. Uh, 193 on the last shot on that, by the way. Stand by. Well, friends, here we are this afternoon at Britton's in beautiful downtown Shreveport, Louisiana, with my good friend, Mr. Marty Britton, who uh, has been a huge help on our project here. And they have, have done all kinds of good things for us, from loaning us guns and ammunition to just basic instruction and certainly advice. So, Marty, got a couple of quick questions for you. Marty, tell me, what are some of the advantages of shopping for guns and shooting supplies in a family-owned or individually-owned uh, store like, like yourselves here? Well, what our customers have told us over the years, uh, what they like about coming in here is you know, seeing us standing behind the counters. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel like every time they come in here, there'll be somebody here with some experience mm -hmm. and uh, that's able to give them some help on questions they got. And they usually have a lot of questions. Well, that's, that's certainly true. Of course, everyone in here that uh, that comes in and, and talks to one of you folks here. You're a hunter yourself. The people you have working here do hunt. You use these guns and you know how to work on them, maintain them. So I think that is so important rather than, I have nothing against the chain stores, but if someone is new to shooting or they really need a, an advice, some advice on reloading or something like that, they really should come to some folks like you. Well, let's, let's look down our list here. We've got a couple of things we want you to cover. Now, what sort of stock do you folks normally carry? We carry a full Smith & Wesson handgun line, uh, Rugers, some Colts, uh, a lot of your exotic 9mm, 40 calibers, and 10mm now. That's, that's your real good sellers. Uh, your Glock, Beretta, Six Hour, uh, Taurus, PT-92s. Uh, quite a full, you know, a pretty full selection of uh, handguns. We have a big handgun sales. Of course, I also see a good many rifles and shotguns. We're going to look at that in just a minute. And I see behind us here you all kinds of reloading things and uh, just a, a whole basic array of, of what your average shooter needs. Yeah, we don't normally carry any soft goods like clothing or things like that, but if they want a deer rifle or a handgun or a shotgun, I've got pretty much anything uh, they will want in stock. And if they reload, and we try to carry as full a line of reloading as possible. Uh, we will order it with a special order, and we do, you know, normally know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, certainly in our business, we're training a lot of women to shoot now, and, less, and people are becoming more concerned about their personal safety. Now, if someone comes to you and says, look, I'm just going to buy uh, a handgun or something, and I haven't had one in the past, I'm new to shooting, what kind of gun would you recommend for them? Well, unless they're adamant about a, a particular type gun, most people in our business would uh, suggest a double action revolver mm -hmm. because it's simple. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a real uh, easy to operate, it's real easy to demonstrate, and it's, it's a real safe gun. Uh, so uh, like for a lady or any kind of novice shooter who uh, probably wants something for home protection, a uh, double action uh, revolver of some type. And of course, they, they, with the, some instruction, they can shoot any of the type of handguns they want to shoot. And we'll show them the advantages and disadvantages to uh, different types. I want to put in a spot for Marty and their business here. It's Britton's at 517 Louisiana Avenue, Shreveport, Louisiana. And that phone number is area 318-221-4131. The zip code is 71101, right? Shreveport, Louisiana, 71101. And they can, uh, they can mail order all kinds of cleaning equipment and different supplies, reloading manuals, which is very important to those of us who reload, and for that matter, bullets, uh, gunpowder, well, you can't, 
I don't know if you can bail on gunpowder or not, probably not, but certainly bullets and all sorts of reloading dies. And they're good friends of ours and have been a huge help to us on this program. So please, uh, if you need something in, your, in our area or you'd like to uh, get something through the mail, well, please give them a call. We all realize that today when you buy a factory produced a rifle that uh, from the major manufacturers we all get a real fine product. Uh, there are some little things that you need to look for in your rifle when you first get it to make sure that it shoots up to its optimum performance levels. Uh, any rifle, as you well know, made up of several components. One is the and we'll be joining our good friend Steve Primus on future programs. He helps build custom rifles down at Britain's Gun Shop. So we'll look forward to the rest of this segment on another show. This is Kay Clark with Clark Custom Guns, Keithville, Louisiana. Uh, Kay's been shooting for quite a while, but just recently he's been winning a lot of titles. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the kind of uh, guns you use and, and what you like about the shooting sport? Uh, well, of course, I was uh, born into a family of shooters, so I've been doing it quite a while. And uh, uh, right now, I've shot a rifle for many years, but uh, about two years ago, I started uh, shooting pistol and getting more into the speed aspect, and that's kind of that's kind of fun. I like it. Uh, it you can always push, and uh, I, that's my nature. I like to push a little, and uh, this is the thing you can do it with, uh, with just going for pure speed. Now let's watch Kay shoot her handgun just a little bit. She won the women's portion of the Masters Tournament this year, and she is one terrific shooter. And here we have Kay's brother, Jim Clark Jr., who is a world-class shooter himself. He's going to shoot the shotgun for us. He's won a couple of three-gun matches, world-class matches, and many other things. He's son of the American Handgunner of the Year, Jim Clark Sr. of Keithville, Louisiana. So let's see Jim shoot these uh, metal targets with a shotgun. And here we are inside Clark's Custom Guns with Jim Clark Jr. And these folks have been so nice to us and so helpful. We want to come back on another show and do a complete segment and go through their uh, repair shop and their manufacturing facility. So right now we're going to talk to Jim for just a moment. So Jim, why don't you tell us where you folks are located? And we're going to flash that on the screen in just a right. minute. The name of our company is Clark Custom Guns Incorporated. Our post office box is 530 in Keithville. K-E-I-T-H-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Louisiana, 71047. And for those folks wanting to call up direct and talk to you, I realize you folks work awfully hard and don't have a lot of time to spend on the phone, but... Uh, Air code 318-925-0836. Well, today we brought our camera to beautiful Berryville, Arkansas, and we're in the Saunders Museum. And here with us we have Ms. Hazel Prentice and Mr. Harold Emmett, and they're uh, going to be taking us through the museum, telling about the, it's unbelievable. Y'all won't believe what's down here. <laughs> so they're going to tell us about some of the things that we're going to be seeing. We're going to be walking around in just a minute. But unfortunately, we won't be able to go through on today's program. We can look forward to seeing the museum on a future show, hopefully soon. They do have a fabulous collection of all sorts of, of unusual things. Uh, their handgun collection includes over 800 working handguns, and they have many guns from uh, notorious people from the Old West and Indian artifacts. It's a wonderful place to go and visit in beautiful Berryville, Arkansas. When I say beautiful, I don't say that lightly because the, the hill country there in the mountains, the Ozark Mountains, is, is absolutely stunning. Another portion of our program that we will not have time for today, but we'll do on a future show, is the black powder section. This is Drew Valentine standing here with me in Branson, Missouri at Primitive Arms Company. And Drew has a great selection of Uberti, uh, old style, uh, frontier type weapons. And he is a unique person, uh, one of the most interesting people you're going to meet. Uh, the good thing about Drew is he can sell you the gun, he can show you how to use it, and if you have a breakdown, he can fix it. So we're going to uh, show his phone number and address on the screen. If you folks need something involving an early uh, type weapon or firearm, uh, please give Drew a call. Now, friends, we certainly want to mention this particular tape produced by Colonel Rex Applegate.
and it features fast and fancy shooters Bill Jordan, Herb Parsons, Ed McGivern. That McGivern footage is actual tape uh, recently found, and it was shot in the 30s, and it's really something to see. And this tape is available from Wells Creek Knife and Gun Works, 32956 State Highway 38, Scottsburg, Oregon, 97473. And it is really something, and each one of us ought to have one of these, because anyone who's a shooter would really enjoy this. We also want to mention Henry Martin at Martin's Gun Shop here in Shreveport. Henry is a Remington warranty station, and he works on all kinds of guns. He's a very fine person and is an excellent gunsmith. So give him a call if you need some work done on one of your guns. And we also want to mention our friend Lenny McGill out at Mail Order Video at 7888 Ostro Street, Suite A, San Diego, California, 92111. His 800 number is 1-800-942-942. 8273 and Lenny has all kinds of shooting tapes that most of us would be interested in so uh, please give them a call and get their catalog they're very nice people friends this is Johnny Rowland your host for the shooting show we want to thank all of you for being here with us today for the shooting show and we want to remind you that we do need your support we're not asking for donations but we are asking for advertising our commercial rates are only two hundred fifty dollars for a thirty second spot and this is nationwide coverage if you don't have a company please recommend us to someone who might advertise with us our address is the shooting show 554 Kings Highway Shreveport Louisiana our zip code is 71104 our phone number is area 318 8-222-8515. Thanks again for being with us. Hope we see you again soon. Those of us with the Shoot and Show would like to give special thanks to Mr. Roy Halls with the Indie Bullet Magazine for his assistance on our project. Roy has moved the Indie Bullet Magazine down to San Antonio. His new address is Indie Bullet, Post Office Box 7468, San Antonio, Texas. The zip code is 78207. His new phone number is area 512-736-1804. We'll be looking forward to seeing Roy on future programs.